Hi gorgeous, welcome to High Vibe Honey for the week of the 29th of July, 2019. I am your host, Gala Darling. It's clearly Titties Week and you're just welcome and this is just how we roll. This is actually a swimsuit that some crazy person just bedazzled and it's kind of amazing and I feel like everyone should own one. So this week we are talking about getting things done and we've been talking about that for the last couple of months, but this week the cards are really giving us some instruction on how to get things done effectively and move through it and feel really good. So I think you're gonna really enjoy this. And our tapping is on being successful and having that trust and faith in yourself that you can get it done. We did a similar tapping last week, so you could like double team these and do one then the other and really boost yourself up and you'll feel absolutely incredible. But let's look at these cards. So our first card of the week is the Eight of Wands in the reversed position. Now the Eight of Wands in the reversed position is often the card that comes up when we have too many ideas. Now I know that you know what I'm talking about. When you are a multi-passionate person and there are lots of things that you love, sometimes it's hard to know where the fuck you should put your focus because you want to do a little bit of this and you want to do a little bit of that. But the truth of the matter is that we can't do everything all the time and be massively successful at all of them. You can be like a jack of all trades and a master of none kind of thing. So what you really want to do is focus in on the thing that you are most passionate about. Sometimes people are like, I have these two projects that I want to work on. One of them is like more lucrative than the other by a little bit, but one of them I really, really love. What should I do? The answer is always to follow your passion. Because if you love something, you can make money out of anything. You will figure it out because you love it so much and you just want to be around it. You want to be immersed in it. But the thing that makes more money that you're not as excited about, it's going to be harder to work on. This is another thing like when people are, they have five different ideas for a book and they're like, well, I don't know which one I should write first. You should pick the book that you can talk about for three years after you've written it because that's what it's going to be. Once you write the book, then you have to promote it for two years at least. So you need to be excited enough about it that you're still going to have things to say two years after you have poured your blood, sweat and tears into the actual writing of the book. So always follow the passion and you really can't go wrong. It's the best way to figure it out. The other thing about the Eight of Wands in the reverse position is it's about selectively saying no to the things that are not going to grow you or expand you or add to your life in some way. So this is a real challenge for some of us. We are a little bit on the people pleasy side. We like to make people happy. And so sometimes we say yes to things that we don't really want to do. So this week I want to challenge you to say no to something. Cut something out of your to-do list that is just not really adding to your life. And we all have ideas about what this could be. There must be something in your life where you're just not really seeing a return on your investment. So it's time to cut that out this week so you can really focus in and fucking kill whatever it is you're really passionate about. Our second card of the week is the Emperor, and the Emperor is one of my favorite cards of all time, especially when I'm working on something. And as a Virgo, I'm pretty much always working on something. So this card is BDE of the tarot deck, and you may think that's big dick energy, and it's not. It's big daddy energy. The Emperor is the daddy of the zodiac, and if you have to imagine him as like a big hairy bear type guy, Great, it doesn't matter. That is who the emperor is. The emperor is successful and he's organized and he can be a little bit domineering sometimes. And what this reading is saying this week is to draw in those aspects of your personality. Where could you be more decisive? Where could you be more of a leader? Where could you inspire people to step up to the plate? And the truth of the matter is, if you wanna be a leader, you have to be willing to do everything that the people under you, technically, are doing. Like, you can't be too good for any kind of activity. If that means you have to go get the coffee, you go get the coffee. You shouldn't be above any of those tasks or roles within whatever it is that you're doing. So this card is really about 
focusing and structure and getting shit together. And there's a store in New York City that I love called Enchantments. It's like the oldest witch store in New York and they do these amazing custom candles. And one of my favorite candles to get from them is the Emperor Candle. And they're really beautiful. They carve it with sigils, they put oils on it and glitter and they carve your name into it. Like they're really magical. So that candle is about bringing in that daddy energy to whatever you are focused on, really getting it done, not making excuses for yourself, not taking anybody else's excuses, and really just getting it done this week. Our third card of the week is the Page of Pentacles. And this card is about manifesting your dreams into physical reality, which is amazing. And it also tells us that the money is coming. So what we wanna do this week is grow in a way that's gonna expand our dreams and our possibilities and our goals that we're working on. So we wanna focus our attention really carefully. Like I was saying with the Eight of Wands in the reverse position, we wanna start saying no to things that are not a fit and we really want to put our attention on what is going to help us get to that next stage. The Page of Pentacles is also about getting really organized and planning really well. So recently I spent two hours at the bank setting up all new bank accounts, getting everything running, new automatic payments so that my savings and my taxes are automated and this is really time well spent. And I went and did this with my father, obviously Emperor card, my father is like the Emperor. And we went and did that and I was like, afterwards, I was like, God, that took so fucking long, like two hours, Jesus Christ. And my father said, yes, and that's the reason why most people don't do it. They don't wanna spend the time, it's a pain in the ass. But if you set it up properly, your whole life will be easy. In fact, you may never really have to think about that money situation for a really long time because you know that it's been taken care of. That is what this card is all about. Setting up systems and processes and shit that are just gonna make your life streamlined and easy and good. So whatever it is in your life that could use some improvement, some refining, I really want you to look at that this week. Maybe it is about setting up your finances. Maybe it's about having a better system for working out what you need to do every week. Or maybe it's just getting an assistant on board, who knows? But there's gotta be something in your life that you could do that will make it easier for you to do what you do. Like nobody can succeed when they're just like sailing by the skin of their teeth. You need to have processes in place that make it easy. Like I personally have a big sketchbook that I write my to-do lists in and I write all my ideas in there and in the back of it, whenever I'm listening to an audiobook or a lecture or something like that, I make notes in the back. So it's kind of all in one space. And then I also run a Google Calendar simultaneously. So I have all my appointments in my Google Calendar, I know where I have to be and when, but I do all my kind of planning and creative work in my sketchbook and that works really well for me. And I like a sketchbook because it's big, I can use a marker, I can doodle, whatever. So that's how I do it. It doesn't matter how you do it as long as you have a system that works for you. Get hydrated, drink your water, and let's start tapping on how fucking successful you are. This is gonna be great. So let's start on the top of the head. I am really successful. I am so damn successful. And sometimes I downplay my achievements. And I'm not totally sure why. Maybe it's that I wanna make other people feel comfortable. Maybe it's that I don't wanna take up too much space. Or maybe it's just what I've been taught to do. But this week I'm gonna start truly owning the fact that I am a really successful person. This week I'm going to think about all the things I've done that have been massive triumphs in my life. Because there have actually been so many of them. It's easy to get tripped up on thinking about what didn't work the jobs I've been fired from, the relationships that didn't work, the friendships that I've left. But the truth is even those things were successes. 
It's all about how I choose to frame them up. I could look at the jobs I've been fired from as a massive failure. But maybe I could see it as something that simply wasn't a fit. And maybe getting fired put me on the right track and helped move me closer to where I really want to be. Maybe getting fired was a nudge from the universe and actually a way of protecting myself. It's all about the story and it's all about how we frame it. So this week I am going to remind myself that all the things in my life have been a success even the things that were hard, even the things that were painful, because I am smart enough to have learned from them. I have used that pain for growth and transformation, and it has led me to the place that I am today which when I look around is a pretty good place. So even though sometimes I doubt my own success or I feel like I simply haven't done enough yet, I deeply and completely love and accept and forgive myself. Because of course I have places that I still wanna go How boring would it be if I didn't? But I can also look back at my past and feel deep joy and gratitude for it. And when I do that, I am empowered to make better choices in the future because I realize that I am already a badass. And anything I do from here is just icing on the cake. And so it is. Okay, deep breath in, hold it at the top and let it go. Now, this week's activity or homework or whatever is firstly, I want you to get your planning together. If you gotta to go to the bank, go to the bank. If you gotta make an appointment, make an appointment. If you gotta hire someone, do some research, put the word out, see what's going on. This is a really good week to get the ball fucking rolling. Especially we just took a week and we were chilling and all that stuff. This week is a really good week to get back in the saddle and fucking kick it hard. But the real homework for you below is to leave a comment and tell me and tell us as a collective who it is that you are gonna channel this week when things are challenging or when you're looking at your to-do list and you realize you gotta call the bank and you're like, oh, I really don't wanna do this. I want you to tell us who you're gonna think of that's gonna inspire you to get it done. Maybe it's your mother, your father, a teacher you had in school, maybe it's a role model from history, maybe it's Madonna, Greta Gabo, who knows? Anyone, it doesn't matter. But tell us who you're going to think of when you're in that place where you're like, oh, I don't feel like this, I wanna take a nap, I wanna meditate, I wanna do anything but this actual task. You gotta do the task, you gotta do the task. There's a thing that my father always says, which is from a book called Eat That Frog. Even the name of the book, I just don't like. But he talks about how what you should do if you really wanna be successful is make a list of all the shit you gotta do, pick the thing you don't wanna do the most, and do it first. Because when you do that task first, you clear up your anxiety. You're like, oh, thank God, it's off the list. And often the dread of doing the task is worse than doing the task itself. I had been like cringing for months thinking about the fact that I had to go to the bank and set up these new accounts. And when I was there, it was actually fine and easy. And most of the time I was just like answering questions and then scrolling through Instagram. Like it's really not that bad. So if you're feeling that this week, pick the thing that is the most difficult thing and get it done. You will not regret it. I promise. Okay. I'll see you next week. I love you very much.